I think if in his England performances over the past couple of years, you you there's no argument that he's earned his place and he's played well. There's there's no debate. In the two big tournaments, there's a bat coming here. But now, you can only take it as now as a manager. He is struggling for confidence. He still has moments in games where he looks fine. Of course he does, but he does. He's he's every mistake's being magnified and highlighted. When you lose your place at club level, you feel more pressure on every game you play. And for some reason, there's an over, for me, to, it's over, what's the word, exaggerated criticism of him. And what I, is the reason? I think when you're captain of Manchester United, and Simon alluded to earlier, and I tend to agree with what he was saying, when you're put, on a, when you're put in front of the camera so often as being captain of one of the biggest clubs in the world, who, let's be honest, for the last couple of years have failed miserably and conceded a lot of goals and been a laughing stock, really, for the amount of money they've spent and the club they are. He's been thrown into the forefront of that a little bit and always wheeled out to take the brunt of it. And he's not the most articulate lad in the world. I wouldn't say he's particularly warm and charismatic. He's not the worst. No, he's not. But I'm, some, I'm just looking for... Yeah. You asked me why does he get more criticism than others. I think there's always been with players a likability or not. That's just the way life is. People take to some people more than others. But when you're a captain, when you've gone for 80 million and you're a captain of one of the biggest clubs in the world and you're not playing well, every mistake is highlighted, you're going you're gonna to get criticism. It's as simple as that. Right. He's going to go to Qatar, right? He's going to go, 100%. He's going to play? Well, I think he will. I don't think he should, but I think he will. I mean, Luke Shaw is saying uh, that Harry Maguire receives more criticism, Simon, than he has ever seen before in football. So, according to Luke Shaw, there is a pile-on like there's never been before on Harry Maguire. His mate at Man United, his England teammate as well. Well, maybe and they're, that it's maybe they're fair. Maybe they're victims together because people suggested that he received more criticism mm. than ever anyone ever seen before. That Jose Mourinho treated him dreadfully, and ultimately, as a result of that, he was a victim of perceptions. Maybe some of the um, maybe some of the degradation of people's regard for. Harry Maguire started with the incident in Greece and his behaviour that was alluded to in Greece and maybe it started from there, I don't know. I do think it's unnecessary, I do think it's over the top I think the main problem for Harry Maguire at this moment in time, I'm not a great admirer of his but I also don't think that this this constant focus on him and constant uh, Deride it, deriding of him is helpful and constructive or actually particularly accurate because he's not playing enough football to be able to be judged by the standards that people are judging him by. The problem for me is that what you saw against Germany was a player that probably isn't particularly match fit and probably isn't sharp. If you don't play enough football, you're not going to be in the same space as someone that's playing regularly. Of course, if you've got innate ability, then you'll be able to catch the distance up relatively quickly. But, you know, you look at the game against the Germans, I thought he was OK at times. Yes, he gave away a bad pass and that was the root cause of Germany's first goal because he got squared up by a good attacking player. It happens to be the best defenders, but the pass was the thing that put him in trouble. The second pass that he gives away in in Germany's half, there's a lot of things that have to happen after that before a goal can be scored. And you can put the blame on Harry Maguire and you can talk about the need for a psychologist. He doesn't strike me as somebody that isn't participating in a game that's hiding, that doesn't want to play. You normally need a psychologist yeah. because you're actually diminished and you can see physically you're hiding and you don't really want it. He's right front and centre. And I think more of that, and I think possibly if he's going to go and he's not going to play enough Man United games to be in the team, which is the part that I disagree with. If you, you should be playing for England if your club form merits it, not your historic form. But by going into the World Cup, you've got three games that you would expect England to be strong in. He can build, perhaps, his momentum in those three games That's against right. the Iranians and against the USA, That's and his confidence will come from there, yeah. away from the British public, away from the Man United fans sniping at I mean, him. That's ridiculous, so, isn't it? But, I mean, but, uh, but it is know, what it away is. Away from it? the very mm -hmm. fans who pay money to go and watch him. I mean, it's hardly constructive, but, is but, it? But it's not constructive. These characters build. getting on his back. But it's not He's one of their own, and they're booing him rotten. But people get booed and they get praised in equal measure. No one complains when they're being cheered. He's so not, do you know what, to be fair to him? He's not complaining. He, he is strong, because yeah. he doesn't come out and say stupid things. So he, he doesn't need to listen to Gary Neville. At some point, his form will return. Well, I would suggest he did what I did. I did go and see my doctor at United. I did go and see a psychologist. You need uh, external help at times. Does he need external help? I'm not so sure, but I think if you, if you try it and it doesn't help you, at least you've tried. Why not? Why not? I'm not against it. I, I think one of the problems for me is that the so, so so one of your let me get this right though one of your main says in the England side who've you relied upon in the past is about to board a flight to go and play for you in the World Cup finals. But in the meantime, seeing a psychologist because of the flack he's getting from his own fans. I hear that, yeah. yeah but who's saying it? he's not saying it? 
But he's not. No, he's not. No, that. I think but what Jim's saying be, is if that is the case, but, but, it doesn't but, but, look but, good. But, 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 but Gary Neville's saying it, and and Gary Neville's not relevant in this discussion. But Harry Maguire's relevant in this discussion. If Harry Maguire is exhibiting the traits of someone that needs to go and see a psychologist, that's a, a psychologist. That supposition on our part, that's a herring that's been thrown in there by Gary Neville. He may well be simply not liking the criticism because he doesn't like it, but getting on with it and trying to turn it around. And if he can't turn it around at Man United because the guy at Man United has got a formula right now that's winning games and he can't break into the side, he has to do it when he's playing for England. And I think, OK, we can easily pinpoint the fact that he gave a bad ball away. That's what he did. Defenders give bad balls away all the time. I think for the bulk of the game, I thought Harry Maguire was okay. He yeah. hasn't. He hasn't had. He's had very few bad games for England, right? So Gareth's argument of I can trust him and he always plays well for me is valid. I think one of the bigger problems, and and it should be taken away. It shouldn't be all on Maguire. Actually, the team's been poor for what five, six games now. Yeah, you're winless. The system. Six. The system for me doesn't work. We play three at the back apparently because we're not confident in our centre halves which tells you one thing before you even go on the pitch. M the majority of England players play their club level with four at the back. So you're already starting out. You could argue they should be intelligent enough to adapt to systems. We've played it before. The biggest problem for me with three at the back and two wing backs is that it, from, from the outset of walking on the pitch, it's a defensive formation. right? It's one less attacking player on the pitch, whichever way you look at it. Most teams that play three at the back are defensive-minded. We have our best players... The majority of our... Well, no, not the majority. All our best players are attacking players. All of them. But well, we've got a defensive-minded coach. Yes. So, so, my, my so point you get is, what you've got. I'm, so this is how he's going to do it. But I'm moving some of the responsibility from Harry Maguire to the management for this. Because if England's, if England's results or the, the way they've played in the last five or six games, if they've played with a bit more energy and a bit more zest and on the front foot in a more attack-minded formation and in these nonsense games and gone, let's just go for it and play high intensity. I agree, Danny. But then but Harry Maguire wouldn't be in the spotlight But, but for they did for 25 minutes against the Germans and they went through them like a butterfly. 25 through minutes in six games. But, but the point is, is that, go back to what Graham Sooner said on Monday, players are not up for it. They're not interested. They can't get that extra three or four percent. And in, in games like this, it makes a massive difference. That's why... That's so when why they were up for it, they're at home, they get beat 2-0 yeah. and all of a sudden the penny drops. And the, it wasn't nothing. It was Southgate made some changes, so you've got to give him credit where credit's yeah. due because we're constantly cr criticising for not making changes. He made changes, and those changes helped the momentum in the game change. And the players took control of the game. The players went, "We're going to apply ourselves against Germany." And for 25 minutes, they ran Germany ragged. Yeah. But and then, and then, okay, they give another goal away from the goalkeeping point of view. Every the bottom line is, is that was a choice. Those performances in those games all, was as much a choice from the players as it was from lack of play, management. Anyone problems. can play, anyone can play well at 2 0 down. Does it not boil <clears throat> down to Manchester United fans? You want your team to win, lay off Maguire. England fans, you want to win in Qatar no. and go deep in the tournament, lay off Maguire. It's simple. But, but Jim, I've got to be honest <laughs> the fans are one thing, the media is another. The pylon and the observation and the constant barrage of observations yeah. is coming from the media. Well, the fans, yeah. the fans go on. The fans boo for thirty seconds. The game goes on, right? But the media are the ones that are ramping up the well, narrative. Well, you said it turns like an ocean liner. Yes, so I you said played that. your part. And, as and well. that's eighteen months ago. But, but you didn't hear boos coming from the media section the other night. You heard it from the supporters. The boos are coming from their pens, and the pen is mightier than the sword. I think we've got too many square pegs and round holes playing three at the back. Too many players not getting the best out of them and one less attacking player on the pitch because of the system we play. In international, in World Cup, we're going to a World Cup. The last team to win a World Cup playing three at the back was Brazil in 2002. Brazil in 2002 had a team, you could argue three at the back, but it was basically an attacking formation because they just wanted to fit as many forwards in as they could. So it was a bit different. But they're the last team to win a World Cup playing three at the back. OK. Hope oh, Gareth's listening. We shall see. He won't change. Coming but, up to but half, he should. Coming up to half ten. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.